All right, today I'm tinkering on the Tahoe, 2010 Chevy Tahoe. Um, the brake lights bother me, <laughs> to say the least. Um, and maybe it's my OCD, I'm not really sure. Basically, each light has two bulbs, an upper and a lower, and they're both dual filament. Um, they both function as running lights. And then, to the top of the bottom, I don't remember what the order is, only one of them functions as brake, one of them functions as turn. I don't understand why GM decided to do that with these Tahoes, this 09 to 14 Tahoe generation, or 07 to 14, yeah, and Yukons. Um, but the pickup trucks function the way that I would prefer, which is both upper and lower are the turn signal and the brake light. So, I have come up with a creative solution. This is covered in electrical tape. <laughs> this is a trailer brake adapter controller, like a universal one. Um, so it has wires in from the vehicle and wire out to trailer lights. What I did was cut those off and basically take the individual turn and brake signal wires going in and made them come out to a single output, which functions as both turn and brake, which is then split going to both bulbs. Um, the, the whole plug has, uh, I'll put the uh, wiring diagram or the pinout rather for the colors up on the screen. Um, but basically you've got a reverse wire, a ground wire, a running wire, a turn signal wire, and a brake wire. And now the output for the turn and brake are combined uh, to be on the same circuit using this bo box here. The reverse wire, as you can see, there's a little bulge there. That's just the reverse wire basically bypassing this because that's not needed. Um, I am running LEDs, so I also wired in a short pigtail with some plugs to wire a resistor in on the input side, not the output, so the box doesn't care about The box doesn't see this. The factory wiring sees this. Um, and that's completely removable, so if for whatever reason I go back to incandescent bulbs, I can actually pull this back out of the circuit, and it's not an ordeal. And I actually soldered it to the tail light harness side and the body harness side of some plugs that I got from a salvage yard. So it is literally a plug and play. Um, and I've got one installed on the passenger side already. Driver side is still stock. So I want to show you exactly how this functions. So I've turned on the running lights. And as you can see, factory, both light up dim. It's going to be hard to see because the sun's on this side. Both light up dim. That's how they're supposed to be from the factory. That's normal. Now, just for the sake of turn signals, I'm going to turn the flashers on. And with that, you'll notice only the bottom light is flashing. The top one functions just as a brake light when the brake pedal is pressed. The bottom one functions purely as turn signal. However, with my module inside on this side, both of them flash. And at this moment, as you can see with the mirror, they are in sync with each other. And it's the same on both sides. However, let's apply brake with my my uh, my stick on the seat. Move forward a little bit. And uh, boom, brake pedal applied. <laughs> now the top is lit up brighter and the bottom is still the turn signal on the factory setup. But with my module, both function as turn signal, even though the brake is applied. And if you'll notice, they actually alternate with the mirror signal. Not a big deal. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, that's just a side effect of the way that box, the trailer controller box, alternates between brake and turn signal lighting. But uh, I have a feeling, and my hope is, that this setup, with two bulbs flashing, brake and turn signal, will be much more noticeable at night than that. So... That's pretty much the whole purpose is more visibility, more light output, and honestly, redundancy. So now if one bulb burns out, um, I still have a turn signal or a brake light on either side. Instead of this side, if the upper filament burns out on this one, I don't have a brake light on that side. But this side, upper filament burns out, I still have the lower filament as brake light. So, But the main idea behind this was to be more visible at night. Alright, so now I've got both of them wired in 
uh, both the modules installed on both sides. And let's turn our running lights on. As you can see, just like factory, dim, both filaments, both bulbs, both lights. Now we've got brighter filament on both bulbs, both tail lights. And turn signal test. Just gotta turn our flasher on. Both bulbs, full brightness with the turn signal, with the brake on. As you can see, they alternate with the mirror. And I know what you're saying. Well, you know, now your brake is on and your turn signals are using both bulbs. Now what? Well, that's why they have third brake lights. So that is the look from the back now with the brakes on. Well, and with the flashers on. That's a, let's turn the flashers off. And I think, yeah, it's still gonna flash fast because I have LEDs in the front and I only have the one load resistor. But now with the brakes on, I have both of them bright over here, third brake light, and both of those bright over there. And like I said, these do have resistors in them, but I still have LEDs in the front that I need to put resistors on, so that's why it's still flashing fast. But the uh, function of it does work. Same thing, brakes applied, both bright, third brake light on, both of these bulbs flashing. We'll go turn signals back off. Brakes applied, third brake light, both bulbs, full brightness. This is underneath the driver's side. As you can see, this is the harness, the body side of the harness coming right here. Now normally, it's off here with one handed, oh the dirt. So this is the trailer, or the, sorry, the tail light harness coming from, going up to the tail light. And usually this is just plugged directly into here. And that's going up to the tail light, that's going to the body, the chassis. And my harness has this same plug on both ends. So it literally interrupts the signal. Because here's my harness here. I just plug this end to the chassis side. Get a pick. Raven. Pick. And this side, going to the tail light, is basically plugging into the sorry, finger finger fumbling in your face. And plugs into here click and now it's just tidying these wires up and uh keeping them up this side a little more important to keep them tidied up because as you can see the muffler and exhaust is right there so those are just be i'm gonna tie them up to the frame there with some zip ties and uh keep them up out of the way uh i think this guy is going to be fine to kind of let it, it gets warm but uh i think it'll be fine to let sort of dangle uh tie it up by these wires and let it dangle so it air cools if for some reason I have them fail because of heat or wires break off from dangling uh, that's sort of one of the reasons I wanted the this that's what these plugs are for just to this resistor so all I need to do is buy a new resistor crimp these plugs onto it unplug this one plug this plug the new one in and the resistor is replaced it's super like modular like that that was sort of the point and if for whatever reason I need to go back to factory there's no molestation to the wiring on the truck. I just unplug my module out of the circuit, plug it right back into the factory, and it's uh, exactly as it was originally. So it can always be put right back. All right, and now we got everything zip tied up and solid. It's not going anywhere. This is just a ground strap for the fuel filler neck. Um, as you can see, I left the load resistor for the LEDs kind of just kind of floating in the air here. It's it's tucked up. It's not hanging down or anything. Uh, but it should get plenty of airflow to keep it cool. Uh, and like I said, if it does give me issues, I'll just run a couple of self-tappers right in the bottom of the body here. And uh, you know, fasten the next one right up to it solid. So it, we use the body as a heat sink. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. Uh, on the other side, it's about the same. Resistor's kind of hanging out down there. Everything else tucked up nicely. There's, there's a good gap. I mean, there's plenty of room here between this exhaust tip. I don't think it's ever going to cause issues. I mean, it's set right above this wiring harness factory, and they don't cause issues, so I think it'll be fine. If, like I said, it does give me issues, I have plenty of room to relocate this. It's got mounting tabs. I can run a couple self-tappers into the body over here and get it tucked up out of the way, but I think this should give it plenty of airflow to stay nice and cool. I don't think it's going to give problems, so that is it. And the good thing is, it's completely reversible, so if the whole system ever goes out, on one side or the other, I can just unplug it, remove it, and put it right back to factory. And uh, make another one, or just 
deal with it working the way I don't want it to. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's it.